No, he's just staring at me. Why are you looking at me? Talk to him because he's something. a talker. No, I like the pressure on you. This is Mark, by the way. How you doing? Awesome. Legend. <laughs> Legend. Now speak to O. <laughs> yeah, so as you know, we're here at Awesome. We're going to come. Uh, my golf art is here to get it, make sure it's safe, see what capabilities it's got, get a dyno on it, and just basically come and see this facility they've got at Awesome. And as we came in the door, wasn't it? We came in the door like, holy crap, this is serious. Like, I've never, I mean, you guys have been in the game for, I was in the Volkswagens when I was in my like, teens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like a huge, huge, to be going this long, and it's obviously expanded since I was into it years ago. Yeah, so talking about expansion, I'm gonna show you into next door. Um, obviously there's a lot of junk and stuff in there at the minute, because we just put a new roof on, but over the next 12 months, awesome, in its entirety, will sort of be next door. The stores is gonna be double extended, but I'll talk to you that as we Go around yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. This is right, so what a facility, though. No, you go first. Who stopped? He won't stop talking. Nick's in charge now. So, it's warm up here, is it? Is it warm up north? Look at it. Uh, I've always had terrible things. Though. It's bad weather. <laughs> Look at it. I've always had terrible things. Terrible things about weather. It's lovely. Get, if you can just get that. get an idea of how big this place is. How big's that? How big's the water? It's another on? probably walk ten it. feet wider than. It. Right. Okay. How, how many down? paces? Yeah. Yeah. We'll just talk amongst ourselves while he's doing that. Yeah, so he's actually, while he's counting. That. No, you could do, do it. You were nearly no, there. It, that's it. feet. I was doing feet. It's going to take yeah, your day. Go on, do feet. No way. Just walk. So he's doing lengths. He's this, not so, really. So this is going to be a bit of an eye opener for, for both of us because we're not really into the bag world, are we? We're not. No, it, Owen's been in it since young. I'm always been crappy French cars, and I. Yeah. So I always set myself up for disaster, but. And I like Japanese cars that rust. Yeah, but you mistreat them so bad you pour oil everywhere. So, yeah. um, but no, it's nice to actually see like a uh, because we don't get it's much round. It's really We're, impressive. I think for us, twenty-three Owen yeah. paces. That's what it is. Twenty-three Owen paces. So, but for us, we don't get stuff like this down where we are. This no, no, no. And to be shown around by um, what might that's called? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah it's, it, at the end of the day, it is a workplace. So, Here he is. stop yes. talking about him. Stop talking about him. Like, Hello, mate. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, oh my days, look at this. Golly. Someone's had some fun in there already, I see. Uh, yeah, I'll put a bit of a horse spin in here. Yeah, a welcome in party. <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously this will be the showroom reception area. Upstairs will be all the offices, sales office, videography. Are you doing well, yeah. Well, yeah. More than a videography? Yeah, yeah but that, wow. if you, if you, the videos are really good quality, isn't they? Yeah, mate, well, what's, yeah. what's the guy's name? Habib. Habib, that's it. Yeah, does it for us. He Shout does some he's yeah, he does today, quality so. stuff. So down there will be um, <clears throat> sort of, well, there'll be two floors, obviously, and it's to be down probably about four metres out. And then there'll be a walkway going all the way down. So where that blue part is now, that's coming out. And then there will be, upstairs will be a simulator room, what? which will have a spiral staircase, which will come down straight there uh, into the dino room. Right, okay. But the, but the customer's dino room. So it will be a full, massive, waiting, chill area. Yeah. With a big glass front window, so then you can then see your car on the dino So you sort of create an experience. Really, yeah. 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 yeah, Just turn up and just dump your keys off, yeah. And then outside, there's a roller shutter there at the back corner, and that's where you'll have your barbecue area. Oh, oh nice. nice. There you go, that's a bit of you. Yeah, I like it. Drag car. <laughs> I've got your on. So this is now the fastest on the pitch of the gas. Yeah, I saw, yeah, yeah. On four wheel drive, so there, um, I understand, is it stock block? It is a stock block, yeah. And that's so we have record got, holder, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. Stock, that's what we wanted. So. Dan's car now, he had the grey RS3, which he took the stop block record, uh, European stop block record, and then he wanted to go a little bit faster and wanted to do it on the TTRS. Yeah. So that's what we've done for it. Quick rundown of spec. So it was single turbo. What, what turbo have you got on there? One of your own? Or that is it turbo is a TTE 777 on this one, and he did a TTE 777, so the turbo engine is. Right. So both cars that he's run. Um, Oh, and he also, no, he did upgrade the turbo. He ran a TT700 initially, and then he upgraded to another turbo. But this one is a 777, and it's just been unbelievable. Really? So, what yeah, are the... It's got upgraded injectors. Obviously, it's got intercooler. As you can see, it's got drag brakes on it. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, obviously, the, the, the 15s on the wheels. Um, and then, obviously, it's pretty much fully stripped out. Yeah. 
think that she bought off the line. And they've said nice things about it. Definitely no, not. they're in there going, what a sack of what shit. What is this? How have they driven this for hours? What a sack of crap. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So, so is this the company's or yours? It's a works <laughs> vehicle. Yeah. It's a works it's vehicle. It's all they had. It's all they had, yeah. It's the company. That's a bit of you, isn't it? It's it's right. It's in my colour, with the right wheels, and it's an RS. I'm going to say this, that or a Lambo. See, yeah. now I'm like, I've always wanted a Lambo, but that, that is Similar stunning. What, what is it, about 100, 120, 150? I don't know what, what sort of money. 200 grand? Really? But yeah, if you, you buy it. This is a, this is a, cheers mate, this is a Vizac. Right. Uh, so it's 2019, it's got about three, nearly, I think it's nearly up to 4,000 miles on the Whoa. road now. Oh, I've it's done, getting a bit rough I, now then. I know, I've, a done a, I've done a few, <laughs> I can't stop driving it. I'm seeing it. I've done it. He won't fit. Small, he won't fit. Do you want to see? Fold yourself in. It's oh, it's easier once to, you're in. Yeah, it's easier to get in that look, than the. Even the key is a Porsche. That's like a five hundred pound option, isn't it? To have it painted the same colour. Cool Can I fire it? Just turn it on the ignition first. Yeah, and then fire up. Is there a start button or is it just key? Just turn the key. You're going to have to get a, some footage of me driving it. But even, the thing is, a good car, you should be able to not even have to put the key in the ignition to appreciate it. And I stood over there, I was 20 feet away and I thought, shit, that's artwork. It is. Wow. See, red and black happens to be my favourite colour, if you hadn't noticed. If you're, so, if you're going out on it, on rule. Don't break it. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? How the fuck do you get out of it? <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, <laughs> I'll have to stay. Oh well. <laughs> Just, I'll, I'll have the lunch about one if that's alright. Yeah. Laugh it up. Yeah, go on. Yeah. I thought it's in slow motion in, in After Effects. At least there's a step down. Mate, that's... That's beautiful. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I like that. This is where we do all our geometries and stuff. So we've got the... Hunter Hawkeye wheel aligner, yeah. and this is our dyno. Now we don't have a cell, so everybody does have ear defenders. Yeah, I can imagine. Right um, next door will be a cell, yeah. but this will be the dyno that will still do most of the calibration work and checking and uh, stage three stuff like that. Okay. Next door will be power runs, and you know, we are doing something with supercars as well. So, uh, so there'll be a lot of that coming in. Do you do dyno. any of your own sort of? Development, or do you use other people's software we work and apply with people it? And do do development. We don't do our own calibration, um, but we do work with some absolutely unbelievable calibrators yeah. and some companies. So you know, obviously this racing line. Um, we do on the BMW side. We do EcoTune, um, and then we've got obviously APR, which we have been for years and years and years. Yeah. So, uh, and we do our our own calibration which is called awesome which we have a calibrator that works with tabby on the dyno right, and right. Like that. so we have quite a few different options yeah, here few. and of course we do race chip as well yeah so race chip is different from what we're normally been used to okay but if you take like our mark 8 gti there's nothing available for that now no, nothing, you know no. and we developed on our rs6 we developed race chip as well right. so we then link in with germany and then develop the program to crack it yeah for well, what no, 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 i mean it's it's, it's not cracking the ECU. No. I mean, you're literally bypassing the ECU, and, and we, we can provide a calibration where nobody else has cracked their ECUs yet. Wow. So it gives us another, you know, option for the customer. Yeah, yeah. This is Patrick. These guys have been out in your car. I uh, heard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to talk to you about what they've seen. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the car's potentially going on the rolling road today, so you've something they just want to. Go yeah, 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 yeah. It's going great. Yeah. yeah. So sure. initially, we have just rode tested the car and logged it out on the road. There's uh, quite a few faults in the ECU. Uh, some relate to underboost. Some relate to actual coolant flow. Um, yeah. Basically what we found, obviously you can see here in the log, that it's just not making requested boost. Um, and that's, that's actually 
an intermittent thing, so it, it, you know it's not doing it all the time. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. So that's obviously something we will look at further as we go through some more of the checks that we're doing on the car. So this is like the, this is the target boost, boost pressure that's requested from yeah. the ECU. So it's required. You know, this is at 3100 well, yeah, 3, RPM, and it's requesting. This counts atmospheric pressure in so 1.7. It's, 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 it's doing 1.7, or it's requesting 1.7, um, and it's actually only getting sort of 0.76. About 10 pound um, boost, yeah. So obviously that that's a lot, a lot down from where it's where it's supposed to be, and it's actually only reaching its target, you know, by 4300 RPM. So, wow. You know, that, that's super laggy in between that. Uh, one of the things we noticed, obviously, the aircon. Um, condensers. It's going to show how bad that yeah. is. You can actually see that bang on there. Yeah. Crap. Um, I mean, you bullshit her. Well, no. So what? So what Toby's saying? What Toby's saying is that uh, the charger, charger uh, temp is yeah. going to be a factor, and it's going to start. We were talking about ignition, pulling ignition time into the car. If if the air, intake air temperature is um, is too high, then it will start. The, the car will try to preserve itself by pulling ignition timing um, for cylinder temps and yeah, stuff like that. Ignition timing will pull boost out, um, but you can actually feel the car derate the power. Really, you know, as it's getting hot um, through the RPM out, out on the road as well. So, you know, the, although it's beating requested, it's requesting a lot less than what it probably would request oh, really? when, when it's you know a, a nicer intake air temp. So this is just the ECU adapting itself to try and save itself. With an upgraded intercooler, that would suffer. It would reduce it, yeah. Um, but I mean, at a stage two, which is what the car is supposed to be, um, we would highly recommend an intercooler at that stage yeah. anyway. So it's already running pretty. So pretty yeah, it's hot. on the so the so the engine. It's not on, that it's bor on borrowed time, but it's it's it's. Kind of its tolerance level with a stock intercool, it's kind of bottlenecked or it's restricted. It's insufficient for the yeah. tuning stage that it's at. And so not only is it insufficient, but on top of that, you're limiting the capacity or the capability of that by blocking the airflow Yeah, it's almost literally like that. putting a piece of cardboard. So you may as well have an intercooler that's this big, because yeah. half of it's probably not doing its job too so, much. So one of the questions from my point of view is, is the car going to go onto the dyno today? Uh, this combined with, I mean, because we're like 30 odd degrees inside here at the moment, this combined with the actual coolant flow issues that we see. So if you mentioned the coolant flow issue, it wouldn't be a good in. idea. Um, I'm not sure Pat talked about it earlier. But so it's got a it's got a coolant yeah. issue as well on the yeah, car? It's got a couple of coolant leaks and it's got coolant it's flow issues as well. And that would be a reason that you probably wouldn't want to put it onto the dyno today? If, if it's not you know, adequately cooling the engine then yeah. Especially it's on a hot day. Good. Yeah, you don't want to So again, it. you know, it's, uh, it's always... we're seeing huge amounts of heat so... Um, it's never going to make the power you're going to want to see in any way. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. need to get that rectified before we get onto the dyno. And what we're going to do initially, we'll make the decision probably in about an hour and a half's time when we've run through everything pre-checks that okay. we want to run on the car, and then we'll make a decision from there. So we need to diagnose the, the coolant related yeah, issue. Yeah, I mean the coolant related, you know, the, the flow is likely to be, you know, to do with obviously the couple of leaks that we're seeing and the thermostat housing. Um, and the boost, we will, we will get to that. So we'll literally pressure test the inlet tract anyway. And, yeah. and go right, well, we'll let you crack we'll on walk. again. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, talk, yeah. yeah, we can talk through the bits yeah. as, as we're doing it anyway. Okay. Well, we'll come back for a second visit and see what else is wrong with it. Let's do it. <laughs>
it got going, didn't it? That gear change. The gear well, oh, I was about to say no, that, pop, that is razor sharp, isn't it? That is bloody epic. You know what? I like this one. Yeah. Can we take this one over instead? Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave the other one. Yeah. Well, the, will this one actually get motor addicts home? What we'll do? Will the red one get motor addicts home? Well, we'll go Halfords. We'll buy 20 cans of red paint. Yeah. We'll paint this one red and they'll never know. That's a cozy car, it's pretty banging, isn't it? Yeah. Right, swap over. Let's have a quick look. I need a wee, unrelated to the drive. Yeah, we, well, I think we all need a wee. Because you're... I am the larger gentleman, yes. Enormous. That's what Thank you very much. much. Height who's, who's told you? Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know, you have a go. That's manual. Yeah. Oh, no, that's what, so that's where it shifts for you. Right. Come across and then I can shift. That's manual now. Right. Brakes are sharp, aren't they? Spin me right round, baby, right I hope round. Not. Like a... <laughs> you ready? Oh, oh see, you're not, you're, it's, it's... You ready? I can't then. That's got some pickup, in it? Oh, I love that sound as well. Why did you do it so yeah, just, just want to run man. Chill, chill when it's done. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely yeah, that definitely did it. That it definitely time. drives better than you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. Oh, Nick. You can tell you don't go many fast cars, do you? Jesus Christ. It's a bit of fun though, isn't it? It's a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you would, though, wouldn't you? You would. If you were sat here, you would. You would. would you? No, not that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. No, no offence. Offense. But enough of that. We're just thankful for driving yeah. this. Uh, left. Um, just left. Yeah, yeah. Thankful for driving it. So we're going to go back to the garage now and find out what the outcome is of the Golf. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Mm, I don't know. Um, yeah, so we've actually got... Uh, the awesome garage to ourselves, as you can see. Which, uh, what should we work on? I fancy that RS4, wouldn't you? you you're going to work on the RS4? Yeah, why not? That's, I'm not going to work on a, that. No, well, we'll get to that. Let's we'll have get a look to in that. the shop. Yeah, let's have a look. So, every decent establishment has a fish tank. We know this. And then this guy reminds me of Stu. This guy here. Cheers for that, mate. Um, obviously, the, the likeness is uncanny, but the other thing is. <laughs> The other thing is, he's obviously, he's a little bit too big for the tank, and Stu can be like that sometimes. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the, the showroom. So we found out they stock a load and load and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of parts. But there's some impressive stuff on display. So can you read that? <laughs> it's kooks. That's an eye crap on it. <laughs> Acroprovic. No, it's not even called Acroprovic, it's an Akrapovic. An Akrapovic, because we are British and pronounce it wrong. Mason chips. Intakes, suspension, it's got everything, one stop shop. Um, you name it, wheels. I quite like these actually, these look alright in sleek, aren't they? No, they're too posh for the sleek. Are they too posh for sleek? Are they? Yeah. This room, this has some very good air conditioning. You can't benefit from that, but I'm starting to smell. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's a short little bit. I mean, we've obviously marked treads around the main place. Let's go back through this door a bit. What? Oh, don't break the rules. No entry. Don't break the rules. <laughs> Bitch, please. <laughs> This is a kitchen area. Um, this is the female toilet. This is the male toilet. Oh, Harry's in there. Sorry, Harry. Um, we're back to Stu. Oh, we might actually find here. This is a really, really good test, and it's a piece of equipment I don't have at the workshop, and I probably will invest in. We use a smoke tester, which is used for detecting air leaks in an intake system, but this is a way of pressure, not only just telling if there's any obvious leaks where smoke can get out using a smoke tester but using something like this actually pressurizes it so it's it's subjecting the intake system to the same conditions that it would be if it was running so it can swell the intercooler pipes a bit pressurize the intercooler inlet manifold gaskets and all that sort of stuff and what they're using is basically a saline it's like a solution uh washing up liquid essentially which is just going to see if there's any any leaks in the intake system again that's something else that could cause other problems but as you've seen and as i saw i don't know if you saw it on camera uh on the screen we've got uh, some debris that looks like when the turbo it's potentially we don't know when or how uh some debris has gone down into the cylinder maybe when the time happened when the turbo failed in this catastrophic fashion that it did 
that it's damaged. Put some little specks and damage in the uh, in the crown of the piston, which actually will make it will provide. Am I right in this understanding? It will provide hot spots. So if you've yeah. got a spike somewhere, if you're heating something up, the, the smallest point of it is going to become hotter than the rest of the surface of the piston, potentially creating pre-ignition and all that sort of stuff. So. That's, that, is that a fair understanding? Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah. so that many things we see in there yeah. could have been the cause. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first, first thing first, we hit that. Like, oh, look at that! Straight away. Silly hissing or anything like that coming out of there. That is howling yeah. out of there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. blowing the bubbles out. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. case just it's just slightly kinked. Yeah, yeah so it's not allowed to perish on yeah, yeah, is it? Well, it's just not. It's not. It's not. It's not broke or anything, right, it's no, just, no. Not just getting by. Nice, yeah. See them pipes, I've got a slight bend to them and you can actually yeah. rotate them and they'll yeah. fit to get the best. Yeah. You see the there's line, there's a line on the line house line to line up with that, that. Yeah, with that yeah, to I get see the that. tangle. So the muffler delete is absolutely peeing out there. You see that one? Wow. Yeah. Should there be an, is there an O-ring in there or should there yeah, be an O-ring in there? there should be an O-ring in there, which probably isn't there, just enough to keep that. So that's, yeah, that's peeking out. So all of that is, Overworking the turbo. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, what's it called? Overspeeding the, tur the turbo yeah, on wheel? Yeah. yeah, you can see that. That's absolutely boring out of the muffler as well. So just, just on the outlet of the turbo there, you've got two you know, relatively big boosts. Significant leaks, leaks yeah. yeah. Here we go, this is interesting, yeah. And that's, bearing in mind, this is from Volkswagen and it's two weeks old. Yeah, they're all, every, every single one. Well, look at that, look! look. Already, yeah. they, they, they all do it. Yeah. So you're losing air pressure from a, a four times revised, Volkswagen have revised this, this item four times, and out of the factory, that's a new item, it's leaking air pressure, so you've got a boost leak there as well. From, boy, it's worth it. I think, from the get go. Yeah, I mean, it, it's probably it. something they've never really yeah, considered. I suppose, yeah. A, a, yeah so issue. when that's on, you're saying there's you've a got, Yeah, bomb. you've got a web yeah, 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 The yeah, chances yeah. are it's it, 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 that minor. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but, it's but is it still interesting to see that that's the case? Because any any leak, is a leak. It's you detrimental, I mean? yeah. So, yeah, I mean... The, 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 the car, car the car's given it's like, I want, the, you know, the ECU saying yeah. I want the I want the boost control, I want two bar, give me two bar, and the turbo's like, well, all right, well, I'm trying here, but yeah. it's I mean, pissing uh, out everywhere else. Any, any little... Oh yeah, so this injector here, the actual seal on that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, nice. This is such a really, it's a con such a good conclusive test. And I see what you mean, a smoke test, Almost, well, it wouldn't show that up for a start because no, it wouldn't have the pressure, pressure to get behind that. Number one's a little bit, not as bad. Um, number three's okay. Uh, sorry, number two's okay. And number three's okay. So one and two on on that rail. Right, okay. Let's do a quick summary of what's going on then. You want a quick summary? Is it filming now? Yeah. Do you want a quick summary? Yeah. It's fucked. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at any of that. All it needs is a couple of bits, as you can see. Um, so, the guys kindly gave me a bit of a rundown of what's gone on. Uh, from what it looks like, there's some debris has got into the cylinder, I think, which I said earlier anyway. Uh, and it's, there's a couple of little tiny bits of damage on the crown of the piston, but that's not, it's that amongst other things. If that was the only thing, I might say, well, we'll continue as we are, whatever. But there's a number of things that have lent themselves to not doing the dyno today. And part of that, uh, we found how many boost leaks? Four? Five? Four or five. Yeah, Con four or five boost leaks. Ones, yeah, so. exactly. Like significant boost, boost leaks. Um, we've got the uh, intake air temp issue with the air conditioning condenser restricting airflow through to the intercooler. Uh, a number of things. Here should is the list. Get a quick Pause it and you can just have a quick read. It's substantial, isn't it? In well, a word. on the plus side, um, oh, the compression test was good. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's something. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> we had a great day. But uh, no, I mean, to be fair, it's not the end of the world. It's lucky that I'm in a position that I can put another engine in. Yeah. We've got all the facilities yeah, at work. This is your fifth car. Your fifth car. To, your, your daily, but you have other vehicles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? I can yeah. try something else. But I mean, this wasn't the car I wanted to spend money on. I wanted to have this car quite powerful. Did all the things it was supposed to do and then that was it but actually um it looks like i'm gonna to have to spend money on it anyway what that means is today we're not we're not going to put it on the dyno for a number of reasons there are a number of reasons it's not going to go on for the risk uh, safety of the car the guy operating it the, the dyno so um we don't want it to completely let go and it's a high high intense it's an intense environment for a, a car to have to be on 
So what it actually has done is remove the risk uh, by putting it on the dyno, by doing all the testing, by doing some really thorough testing, which awesome do, rather than just booking book the car in, stick it on a dyno and see what happens. Uh, for anyone that was gonna get their car dynoed, do your checks first. This is something that these guys have proved today. It could have saved us having to get the train home or having to get the car recovered home. It's unlikely that would have been the case. It got us here and it drove all right, considering what's up with it. But um, in the future, just if you're gonna do it, get someone to look over your car first because you could either dodge a bullet or at least get the most out of your car for what you're trying to do with it. There's no point in having a car dyno, spending money upgrading it if you've got really fundamental issues. So Awesome have done an awesome job at doing that by removing the risk and removing the, the potential you know it's a short video of stuff it. going on. So that's about it. Anyway, thank you very much Awesome for having us. Thanks to the guys here. The facility is absolutely unbelievable and they've given us a really, really, really great experience today. So, um, so that's it, yeah. Do your homework, fix your car kids. <laughs> I'm on no fix up, I'm gonna